Hello, my friend. It's me, Kylie. Welcome to the studio. You came here at a great time because today around here, it's the beginning of the holiday season. We celebrate Christmas at our house, but I know that lots of people celebrate lots of different things and have different ways of welcoming winter and loving each other. So I'm gonna share some of my favorite traditions today, but you can adapt any of these to fit your traditions, your family, and your way of loving people and creating in the world. The first thing I want to show you how to do is to wrap a present. Then we're going to make all kinds of crafts together, new ones. We're going to remember ones we've made before that are awesome. We are going to have the best time. Here is my box. I was going to wrap a real present that I bought for Dax, but then I thought, he might watch this and then he'd know. And one of the best things about a present is that it's a surprise. So, empty box. I have double-sided wrapping paper, so the first thing I need to do is figure out what side I want to use. I think I like this stripy patterned side. So I'm gonna put that facing down. Next, I need to measure how big my box is and how much wrapping paper I'm going to need. So I'm gonna start on one edge, and since I have to cover four sides of this, I'm gonna flip it four times. Okay, so I'm gonna start right here. One, two, three, four. That's how long I need it. Then I'm gonna give it a little scooch because it's gonna need to cover these sides too. So I look, is it about halfway up the box? Perfect. I go about halfway up the box here too. Now we have our paper just the right size. I'm gonna put my box right in the middle and get out my tape. Now I'm gonna wrap one side up. And you can either hold it there or use a little piece of tape so you can keep it all nice and tight. Now pull this side up nice and tight. It's like wrapping your present in a little blanket. Little piece of tape. Look, we're halfway there. Now this is the tricky part. You have these little openings. What do you do? Do you gather this up? Do you crunch it down? I got you. So the first thing you wanna do is take this flap on the top and fold it flat. That's gonna create these two side triangles. See? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now you're gonna fold them in kind of like an envelope. One, two. Now you're left with one triangle. Fold that up, little piece of tape. Great, now do the same thing on the other side. Ta-da! Hi friend, it's me Kylie, happy holidays. No matter what you celebrate, I hope you're having a really good time celebrating it. My family has a tradition where we put up a Christmas tree. I wanted to show you some of the ornaments that we put on our tree. Let's see, oh, this one's new this year. French fries because Dax loves french fries. And to be honest, I do too. <laughs> oh, donuts, another food we really love to share together on special occasions. <gasps> and look up here, it says 2018, because that's the year Dax was born, and there's a picture of him around his very first Christmas. <laughs> so cute! <laughs> You also might have noticed that this year we have a special addition. We have a marble run in our Christmas tree. Do you want to try it? Okay, cool. Let's pick a marble. Um, ooh, this one's awesome. Cool. All right, it starts up here. Ready? One, two, three. So fun. My favorite part of the marble run is when it hits this bell ornament and adds a little holiday cheer. <laughs> Let's see, what else do we have here? Oh, here's an ornament where Dax painted a solar system last year. Oh, and this one. This is a solar system ornament that we made together. If you want to check out that video, search for Kylie Makes Planet Ornaments. <gasps> you know, this was a whole year ago and it's really cool, but it's a new year and I have a new idea. 
for new planet ornaments. Should we make some? All right, let's go to the studio, make some ornaments, come back down here, hang them on the tree, and we can have a solar system marble race. You want to? To the studio! Welcome to the studio. I am so excited to make these felt solar system ornaments with you. The first thing, if you want to follow my pattern, is to get my pattern. Go to kyliemakesit.com backslash kids and you'll see it right there. Print those off and then you have all the pieces you're going to need to sew up this project. If you don't want to do this and you want to do your own thing, you know I'm all about creativity. Whenever we're making crafts together, you can be as creative as you want. Don't think that you need to make them exactly how I make them or even with the exact same things. I love giving you ideas that you can take and make however you want. Today we are sewing, which is something we haven't ever done on the Kylie Makes It channel before. I'm so excited. I'm gonna be using these pieces of felt and a sewing needle. Now, sewing needles are sharp and they are small. So if you're not quite ready to use a sewing needle yet, there's another amazing way you can do this project. Print out your patterns and just get out some paper. Then you can trace the shapes, cut them out of whatever design paper you want, glue them down, and then you can have your grown up, or you could do it too, punch some holes all the way around the edge of your ornament, and you can use a running stitch, more on that later, to sew all the way around the edge for a cool, cool ornament you could hang on a tree, or from your ceiling, or from a mobile, whatever your creative mind can come up with. First things first, I printed out all my patterns. The next thing I need to do is cut them out. Let's start with Uranus. All cut out. You'll see on my patterns that there's the name of the planet that the piece belongs to and a color. This will be the color felt or paper or whatever you're using that I used for that planet. If you're using my patterns and felt, one nine by 12 sheet of felt of each of these colors will be plenty to make these amazing ornaments. Here's the colors I used. Dark gray, light gray, white, red, dark yellow or light orange, yellow, light brown, dark brown, light blue, bright blue, dark blue, and green. I'm gonna take each pattern piece and trace it onto my fabric or paper. So I'm just gonna hold it with one hand and use a marker to trace all around the edge. Do this for each piece of your patterns on the color felt that it says on each piece. Once you get all of those pieces traced, and you might need a grown-up to help with that part, it's time to cut them out. If you need a grown-up's help with this part too, that's awesome. You guys can talk about planets while your grown-up cuts. Ta-da! All of these pattern pieces have been cut out, traced, cut out again, and now it's time to start actually making these felt ornaments. They're gonna look incredible. A little trick that I'm doing is I'm gonna actually glue the pattern pieces onto the front piece of my planet before I sew it. This will just help keep everything straight and everything together so you don't have to hold it and sew it and it'll fall and it'll be crazy. Blah, blah, blah. So I'm just using hot glue. You can skip this part or use regular glue if you want to use something besides hot glue because hot glue is, you know, hot. There's two ends to a sewing needle. There's an end that has an eye. No, not that kind of eye, just a little hole. This is where your thread goes. And then there's an end that's pretty sharp. These are easy to lose and would really hurt if it got stuck in your foot or something. So I always make a special place for my sewing needle. This is the place that it lives whenever I'm not using it. Today, it's right here. And I'm just gonna stick it in my fabric anytime I'm not using it today so that I don't lose it and I always know where it is. The first part of sewing is to thread your needle. That means we're gonna take whatever thread we're using and we're going to string it through the eye of our needle. This can be so tricky, especially as your needle gets smaller and smaller. Don't forget, you can always ask a grown up for help after you try a couple times. I'm gonna double my thread. So I'm going to run the string all the way to the bottom. Now I have two pieces of string at the end that I need to tie off. I'm gonna loop it around my finger just like that. 
and then I'm gonna roll it up. Roll, 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 and pull. This will make a little knot at the end. The stitch I'm gonna teach you and that we're going to use today is called a running stitch. You're gonna start by putting your needle into your felt. Pull, 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 pull. You're just going to move a little bit forward, stick in your needle, pull it out. Move a little bit forward, stick in your needle, pull it out, just like that. When we reach the end of our stitches, we run out of thread or wanna change color, we need to tie it off so that the thread doesn't immediately come out. I'm gonna tie a double knot, which means I'm gonna tie it twice. Ta-da! We sewed a running stitch. Ready to get sewing these planets? Let's do it. I'm gonna add stitches around each felt piece that I've added to the front of each planet. stitching is done on the front of my planet. So I have the design side and the back. Now's the time where we're gonna sew these together. I'm gonna sew all the way around the edge of both of them until there's about mm, an inch and a half left of an opening. All right, I stitched all the way around except for this little opening that I left in the top. See it? We made a little planet pocket, and now I'm gonna fill it up with a polyester filling. You can use whatever kind of stuffing you would like. Kinda looks like a cloud, doesn't it? Jupiter in the clouds. Okay, not what we're doing, not what we're doing. Break off a little bit of stuffing, and just stuff it in. That's why it's called stuffing. If you want your planet to be an ornament, you can take a little piece of ribbon, double it, tie it in a knot at the ends, Tuck that knot right inside that last little gap, and then just sew it right in with those final stitches. And you have a felt planet ornament hand sewn by you. I love it. Let's make some more. Planet ornaments are done and they are amazing. I can't wait to hang them on our tree and do another marble race. Let's go. Let's go. Ready? Me too. Okay, let's make some room. We got new ornaments, new year. I'll put these on the other side of the tree later. That's enough room. Sun. Mercury. Venus. Earth. <laughs> Mars, we'll put on this little limb coming out of the marble run. Jupiter. Uranus. And last but not least. Neptune. Neptune! You're not a marble, you're an ornament. Don't worry, we'll get you a marble. Everything's gonna be fine. <laughs> I think this looks amazing. Oh, we can't forget. We were gonna do a solar system marble race. Have you ever raced marbles before? You have? Awesome. Okay, well, I like to kind of pick marbles that look like each part of the solar system. So let's see. Yellow sun. We'll get this black one with kind of white little spots for Mercury. Maybe yellow. We need a bright yellow. Oh, yeah. Venus. Earth should probably be green with a little bit of blue. Perfect. Mars. Red. 
This looks like a great Jupiter. Saturn, yeah, that's ringy. Mm. Uranus and Neptune, that dark blue with the white swirls. All right, ready to race? They are. Ready? They are. Okay, who do you think is gonna win? Mm. One, two, three! <laughs> oh, it was Jupiter. Great job, Jupiter. Hi, red spot. <laughs> Wasn't that fun? I've actually received some pictures and videos of makers just like you who have made those ornaments, either to hang on their Christmas tree or to hang in their room as decorations. <sighs> Incredible job, everyone. The next thing I want to show you all is how to draw a classic winter scene, a snow person. Let's do it. This is going to be such a fun drawing that you can customize to add a lot of different personality to your snow person. I'm going to start with a long skinny triangle, which will be the carrot nose of my snow person. I'm going to round off the end a little bit. Ta-da! Now I'm gonna draw most of a circle all the way around, but kind of behind this carrot. So I'm gonna stop when I get to it. This will make it look like the carrot is overlapping the circle that is the head of our snow person. Ready? Check it out. Boop, there we go. Now I'm gonna do that same overlapping trick with the circles that will go under the head of our snowman, the torso and the base. Ready? Start right here. Ooh, that's a big one. And stop. If I don't go through it, it'll look like this circle is on top or stacked on top of this one. We'll do the same thing for the base. Time to add a hat. I wonder what kind of hat you would add to your snow person. I think I'm gonna go with a top hat. I'm gonna do that by making three rectangles. A long skinny one for the brim. Another one for the ribbon. And then another one on top of that for the rest of the hat. I kind of put it at a little tilt because my snow person's got style. I'm gonna add two squares for the eyes. It would be kind of cool to make a snow person with cool glasses, wouldn't it? This drawing is so endlessly creative. I like to make my real snow people with uh, stones for their mouth in a line, so I'm just gonna do some dots like this. Cute. And, oh, let's add a scarf. I'm gonna start with a square, cause that's kind of gonna look like where the scarf is knotted up. Then a long rectangle after that, maybe a little curve so it looks like it's blowing in the wind. Maybe some little yarn tassels, that's cute. And then I'm gonna follow this curve from the head a little bit further down for the scarf. Add some pattern. That's gonna be very fun to color in. And maybe some buttons and some boots. I'm gonna do some half circles, just so it looks like the toe of the boot from straight on. Cool, what's this guy missing? Oh, some arms. I like to use sticks for the arms of my snow people, so I'm just gonna draw a line like this, double it out, make it look kind of random branches. Okay, so instead of letting this snow person just hang out in the middle of a snowstorm, let's add some ground. We're gonna add a horizon line. So a horizontal line that makes it look like this snow person is actually sitting somewhere. And I'm gonna make mine a little curvy, so it looks like maybe they're sitting on a nice snow drift or something. So right behind, I'm just gonna go like this, stop. So it looks like the snow person is in front of the line and I love it. 
friends, it's me, Kylie, and I'm so excited you're here. I wanna tell you about something so cool that happened. So, the other day, Dax and Hashbrown and I were just hanging out when I looked out my window and I saw something amazing. Huge, fluffy flakes of snow. So much of it coming down. It was the first snow of the year. It was so exciting. We hurried up, we put on all our warm clothes, we went outside and played in it. <gasps> The grass is done. We even made a very leafy snowman because there were still leaves on the ground from fall. So I really wanted to take you out and play with it, but then the snow melted, which got me thinking about weather. You and I are gonna make some snow together today, but first we need to learn a little bit about weather. If you can see outside right now, look out your window. There's four things that you can observe or notice about the weather. Number one, the temperature. Is it very hot or very cold? Number two, is it sunny or cloudy? cloudy, how sunny. That's something you can also observe about the weather. Number three, the wind. Is it super windy? Or no wind at all? Or somewhere in between. And then the fourth thing that you can observe about weather is whether or not there's any precipitation coming from the sky. Precipitation is just water in various forms falling from clouds. So rain, sleet, hail, or snow. Now that we understand that, to the studio! Let's make it. Welcome to the studio, or should I say weather lab? Because before we make our snow today, let's understand a little bit more about how snow is made in nature. To do that, we need to start with water because water is a key component for how snow is made. The first thing we need to know is that water comes in three forms. There's a liquid form, which is the kind we drink. There's a solid form, which we call ice. Sometimes we put that in our water when we're gonna drink it to cool it down. And then there's a gas form or water vapor. If we use really hot water, we can see this, ready? Do you see that steam that's coming up off the water? It's hard to see and it goes away really quickly as the water cools down into liquid form, but I can still see a little bit of gas coming off of the water. This is an important part of how snow is made because it's an important part of how clouds are made. To demonstrate this today, we're gonna do a cool and beautiful experiment. We're gonna make a cloud in this jar. To make your own cloud in a jar, you're going to need a jar, hot water, ice. I'm gonna use a little bit of food coloring just so we can see it a little bit better, but that's optional, and some hairspray. I'm gonna start with the food coloring. I'm gonna grab my hairspray, my lid, and my hot water because we need to go real fast on this. Ready? Hot water going in, hairspray going in. We're gonna put some ice on the top lid. Observe what's happening inside of our jar. Do you see the cloud forming in there? Do you see it swirling all around? This experiment works just how real clouds work. First, the sun or some other heat source heats up the water on the earth, like the ocean or a lake or a river. That liquid water then becomes a gas. When it gets heated up, it turns into water vapor, just like this kettle turned our water into water vapor. That water vapor goes up, 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 up. Then those small, small water vapor particles 
find something in the atmosphere to bind onto. It might be some dust or pollen in the air. In our case, it was hairspray in the jar. <laughs> Those water vapor pieces bind on and then they become a cloud. A big fluffy cloud or a wispy cloud. There's so many different kinds of clouds. Ready? What does this have to do with snow, you ask? Well, if it's cold enough on the ground, and if it's cold enough way up in the sky, those little tiny water vapor particles that have clung onto something freeze, and they become an ice crystal. That ice crystal might attract other ice crystals, and they lump, lump, lump together until they're so heavy that they fall out of the cloud onto the ground, making snow. For this activity with snow, you're going to need some dark construction paper, I'm using black, some cotton swabs, some glue, and scissors. Scientists say that it would be very hard for there to ever be two snowflakes that were exactly alike. That being said, there are some things that are true about all snowflakes. For example, all snowflakes have six sides. There's also general classifications that certain shapes of snowflakes have been called. We're going to talk about two today. One is the simplest shape of a snowflake, which is called a plate. Do you know what a shape with six sides is called? A hexagon. A hexagon, or a plate snowflake, looks like this. One, two, three, four, five, six sides. The snowflakes that I love to make are called dendrite snowflakes, and they're the kind that have legs. So if we started with this basic plate, we could add in little legs or arms of a snowflake, just like that. Then we could keep adding because Water molecules come together in all sorts of different combinations to make beautiful snowflakes. Once you decide on your design, glue it down. Then you can keep your snowflake and it won't even melt. snowflake activity is to make paper snowflakes, which I love doing. I have a huge stack of just white printer paper because once I start doing this, it is hard for me to stop. <laughs> My grandma taught me how to do this when I was a little girl and I couldn't get enough. And now I'm not so little and I still can't get enough. The first thing we need to do if you're using printer paper is to make it into a square, okay? Bring this corner up here until this side and this top line meet up. Then fold that triangle that it makes. See? Now you're going to cut this long rectangle piece off. Now we have a triangle that, when you unfold it, is a square. But we're gonna fold it back into a triangle for now. Like I said, snowflakes have six sides. So in order to fold our paper so we can cut it into a six-sided snowflake, we're gonna fold this triangle into thirds. That means we're gonna make three sections on this paper that are the same size. So I'm gonna start by folding mine right down the middle and making a crease just as a guide. Then I'll unfold it. Now I'm gonna bring one side up over here and the other side up over here. This will create six equal sections on our square. Watch. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now 
we cut. <laughs> Anything you cut on this outside will be the outside of your snowflake. Anything you cut on this very tippy point will be the very, very middle of your snowflake. And anything you cut here will be the inside design of your snowflake. One thing that's important to remember, you never want to cut off the whole side because then your snowflake will fall apart. So you can cut pieces out of here, but make sure that you always leave a little bit of paper connecting the whole thing together. I'm going to start out with a really fun, simple snowflake that you can make at home. Ready? So I'm gonna start by cutting a triangle out of the middle. Then I'm gonna cut kind of a crown pattern out of the very top. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to cut some triangles into the sides. Remember, you never want to cut the whole side off. You see how I'm leaving a little bit connected on the edges? That's what you need to do. This is the best and most fun part. Ready? Let's do it. Unfold. That's half. <gasps> cool! That little bitty triangle that we cut on the point now has six edges. One, two, three, four, five, six. All those triangles we cut on the sides became the inside design. And then when we cut that crown pattern around the outside, we got this cool zigzaggy pattern on our snowflake. Well, you know I have to make some more, right? making paper snowflakes. So far, we made a cloud in a jar, which then would make snowflakes. We made snowflakes. And for our last craft today, we're going to make something out of snow. Now, Kylie, you might be thinking, there's no snow where I am right now. How am I gonna do? Hey, hey, hey. With our imagination and together, we can do anything. We're gonna make some snow so we can make a snow person. Is this gonna be real so? No. Is it gonna be super fun? Yup. We're gonna start with a pile of cornstarch. You're gonna want about 32 ounces of cornstarch for one can of shaving cream. <laughs> I'm gonna start mixing it together. Whoa. Shaving cream smells so good. It feels so cool. I wish you could feel this. All right, this tray isn't working. Let's just get rid of it. I'm also gonna add in some glitter. You don't need to do this. I'm just adding it for beauty. Does it look like snow to you?
It's not cold like snow, which is part of what makes snow really fun, but also, I don't need to wear mittens. Are you ready to make a snow person? Let's do it. First, we need to form a sphere. This is so cool because it's really powdery, but you can still pack it into a ball. Whoa, love it. One. Now we need to form another one, a little bit smaller. When I make snow people with real snow, I roll my snowball like this. Jump, 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 jump. And the snow sticks. But this snow you can just pick up in your hands and pack. Cool. One more? All right, a little one. Awesome. I'm gonna use some pipe cleaners to add some details to my snow person. Starting with a scarf. Cute! Now a hat. How's that look? I love it. When I make snow people outside, I use branches for arms off of my tree. So I'm gonna make some little branch-like thingies with pipe cleaners. Hello! Hello! <laughs> what else? Oh, a face? Good idea. name our little snow person. How about Snowy? I like it. Simple. Basic. Classic. This snow won't melt, so you can just keep playing and playing and building and building. I'm gonna make a big snowy mountain. And then I'm gonna go skiing. sledding. All kinds of fun things that you can do in the snow or in your imagination. That was a fun project. If you want to make more snow, here's an idea. This one is a painting. Here's what you need. You need a white crayon or oil pastel. This one's broken, but broken crayons still make art. You need some watercolor, watercolor paper, a brush, and some water. This is a water brush, which you don't need, but are very cool. The water's in here. This is the brush, and look, you can get the water to come right out if you just give it a little squeeze. For this one, we're going to draw first. We're gonna draw a snowflake. Draw it however you want, but you're gonna draw with a white crayon. This can be a little tricky to see because you're on white paper maybe. So you just need to kind of get down low and do your best. And I'm pressing down really hard because I want the wax to get in all the little spots on the paper and protect it. A masterpiece, right? Well, you can't really see it yet, but all of that is about to change. Brush. Water, watercolor, here we go, watch this. Do you see what's happening on the places where we put the wax? The wax is blocking the paint from getting onto the paper. This is called a resist, and it's gonna make us one cool snowflake painting. another great idea for this painting. I need to go get something. Watch this while you wait. Hi, Lynn. It's Kylie, and what's your name? Dax. It's Kylie and Dax, and we are opening up something so cool today. Dax, what are we gonna open up? What's that called? The Maker Box. Maker Box! All right, what's in there? What is it? <gasps> Show our friends! Dax, what are these? What are these called? What are these called? What are they? What are they? Cookies. They're cookies. They're beautiful. I, <gasps> I know. Look how beautiful they are. Don't you wish we could eat them and keep them forever? Yeah, eat them. And keep eat. them, right? Have you ever heard of a gingerbread house, Dax? Mm -hmm. Have you, friend? You have? 
When I was little, we used to try to make gingerbread houses every year out of candy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I always wanted to eat it up instead. <laughs> I have an amazing idea. What if while we eat these cookies, Mama makes an amazing gingerbread house? Friend, do you want to help me make a pretend gingerbread house that we don't eat, but we get to play with all year long if we want to? To the studio! Welcome to the studio. The first part of building our gingerbread house is to imagine what we want it to look like. I'm just going to brainstorm, which means draw out a few ideas of different designs that I like. There's a job called being an architect where you are the one who designs houses, real houses that people live in, houses and buildings and bridges even. Let's start dreaming. I think I would like my gingerbread house to have a pointed roof. I wonder if we should have another floor on our house like an upstairs. That will be our art studio. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then we'll put some windows on the sides and stuff too. I think I also want some special decorations on the house, but we'll get to that part later. The first thing we need to do is make some plans to actually build the house. I'm gonna get out a ruler and start drawing very precise plans. This isn't just an idea now. These are plans that have measurements on them that will show me how big I actually need to make the pieces of my gingerbread house. Be right back, I'll get my ruler. Have you ever used a ruler before? Rulers help you get very exact measurements. This ruler has inches and centimeters on it. They also help you draw very straight lines so that you can get very exact drawings. I think I figured out the measurements for every single part of the gingerbread house I'm going to make. My next step is to cut out each piece of my gingerbread house out of cardstock. This will be a template that I can use when I cut the different pieces of my gingerbread salt dough. If you want to try making the same gingerbread house I'm making today, you can go online to kyliemakesit.com backslash parents, and that's where you can find a copy of the exact same templates that I'm going to use here today. Using the measurements from my drawing, I created these template pieces for all of the gingerbread salt dough that we're going to need to cut to make our amazing gingerbread salt dough house. So excited. Remember, the gingerbread house that we're making today, you cannot eat. This one is to keep. It will stay for a long time, like a long time. But that also means that we're not going to eat any part of it. It's not good for us to eat this stuff and it would taste nasty. So we're going to make something that's going to look like cookie dough, but it's not. It's called salt dough. And when you bake it in the oven, it gets really hard like rocks. It's gonna be great to build our gingerbread house. Here's the recipe for the salt dough. I need to make a lot of this for my house, but I'll show you just the basic recipe and then you can make whatever you want with it. If you're gonna make a big house, you might need to make a little bit more. Just double or triple the recipe. I'm gonna start with two cups of flour. Then I'm gonna add one cup of salt. Next is the part that smells so good and is going to give us that really great gingerbread color, cinnamon. We're going to use a half a cup of cinnamon. Now stir up all the ingredients while they're dry so that the color gets all mixed. Now that it's all pretty mixed up, we're going to add in some water. I'm going to start with one cup of water. Now I'm going to stir it up. Once it's combined a little bit, you can get in there and use your hands to knead the dough together. Ooh, it feels gooey. Kind of nice though. You want your dough to end up looking like this. 
You don't want any extra water in there, so get it just until it'll stick together. If it's too sticky, add a little bit more flour. If it's too dry, add just a little bit of water at a time until it sticks together. I like this part. <laughs> Now, just like when you're making Christmas cookies or real gingerbread, we're gonna roll it out on our table. To prevent it from sticking to the table, we're gonna add just a little bit of flour. Perfect. Now, you need a rolling pin. I'm gonna roll this out to a little under a quarter inch. I don't want it to be too thick because this is already going to have to bake a long time. Next step is to take the pieces that we need for our gingerbread house and cut them out of the dough. Pick your pieces up with a spatula or very carefully and then put them on a baking sheet that has parchment paper on it. Put that in the oven at 200 degrees, which is pretty low. If you go higher than that, they're gonna get puffy, so keep it at 200. And then they need to bake for three to four hours. I know that's a really long time, but your house is gonna smell so good. Every hour, take it out of the oven and flip it over. After three or four hours, you wanna make sure that they're hard in the middle. I'll see you again when all of my pieces are ready to go. This is my last sheet of gingerbread salt dough. All of these pieces baked in the oven for three hours. Three hours! I flipped them over every hour and they smell so good. So does my whole house. <sighs> they wouldn't taste very good because reminder, we're not eating any of this. It's not to eat, it's to keep but they smell delicious. I let these bake for three hours and then I let them cool off. And now I'm so excited because it's time to put our gingerbread salt dough house together. <laughs> I have been waiting for this for so long. I took my patterns and put them on top of each pile of pieces so that I can keep everything straight. I also have my model so I can show you which piece goes where. We're gonna start on the bottom and work our way up. So we need to find our lower level front and back pieces and our lower sides. We'll start there. Now, I let my salt dough sit out a little bit before I put it in the oven, and something really interesting happened. One side is dark brown, and one side is a little whiter. It's kind of cool. So I get to decide if I want the white side to be out or the dark brown side to be out. I think for the bottom level of my house, I'm gonna have the dark brown side be out. I'm gonna use hot glue to put this together, and then we're going to use something else that will look like frosting. But hot glue is what's actually going to be really strong and hold our structure together. This is kind of like the nails or screws of a house. The wall is going to connect right on this edge, so I'm gonna put my glue all along the edge. Now, I'm gonna take my wall and attach it. Because these pieces are pretty heavy, I am going to run a strip of hot glue down each side just to support the connection. Awesome! All right, let's do the next side. Great, now it's time to put on the back wall of my house. And that's how we do it. Piece by piece, we just glue it together. Let's keep going.
love our gingerbread salt dough house. Wow. It's just like I imagined it. Don't worry when you're putting yours together if it's not perfect. Mine sure isn't, look. There's some gaps and some things that don't quite fit exactly right. There's hot glue strings all over it. But you know what? Sometimes when we're trying so hard to make something so perfect, it isn't even any fun to make. And this gingerbread salt dough house is for you. It's for you and your family. You get to share it with them. And so the most important thing isn't how perfect this is. The most important thing is that it is fun and a good memory for you and your family. Also, don't worry how it looks right now. The next steps are what's really going to make this gingerbread salt dough pop. The next step is to put some frosting on it. I'll go get what we're gonna use. Be right back. It's time to frost our house. I'm going to be using white latex sealant. You can buy it in tubes like this or in tubes like this. Ready? I think it looks so amazing. Do you like it? Oh, <laughs> you can't see it. I covered it up for a big reveal. Are you ready? Okay. Ready? Ready? <gasps> Isn't it awesome? The best news is it's not even finished yet. We haven't even put any candy on it. And that is one of the most fun parts of making a gingerbread house. <laughs> I can't wait to show you how we're going to make the pretend candy for this pretend gingerbread house. Before we do that, I need you to look me right in the eyes. Are you looking at me? Okay. The candy we're about to make looks really real, but it's not. We're going to make it out of polymer clay. So before I show you how to do it and before we get started, you need to look in my eyes and promise me that if you're making this at home, you're gonna make it with a grown up and you can't put anything in your mouth. Deal? Okay. <laughs> I'm so excited to show you. I'm gonna grab my polymer clay and let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is make some candy canes. So I'm gonna take a block of white and a block of red. I'm just kneading it so it's pretty soft. And then I'm going to roll it into a coil. Now I'm gonna roll out my white. Perfect. Now I'm gonna roll these together gently. This is my favorite part, the twisting. Ready? this strip so that all my candy canes are about the same size. You're just going to take your little candy cane strip and bend over the top. Awesome. Now I'm going to show you how to make a round peppermint. Take a ball of white, put it down, and flatten it into a circle. Then you can just take little balls of red clay and put it along the outside. And now I'm gonna fill in the gaps with white. So it goes red, white, red, white, red, white, red, white. Then I'm just gonna squish them in toward each other and then give it a really gentle roll. Smush, mush, mush. And a peppermint. Let's try to make a lollipop. All you really need to make a lollipop is a quail. And start wrapping it in a circle like this. And then you have the candy part of your lollipop. 
You can use a toothpick for the stick of your lollipop. I'm cutting the soft part off of Q-tips. Stick that in there. And there you go. Now I'm gonna show you how to make a chocolate chip or a Hershey kiss. I have my coil and I'm gonna cut it about this big. Now that I have my sections, take one, roll it into a ball. Put it flat on your table and press the sides down. Pick up your Hershey Kiss or your chocolate chip and squeeze the very, very top into a point. Do you see it? Then all you're gonna do is take that top and bend it over, just like that. A perfect chocolate chip. Wanna make a gumdrop? Okay, to make a gumdrop look like a real gumdrop, we need a couple extra things besides our Sculpey clay. We need liquid bakeable clay. This is a polymer clay that bakes just like this, except that it comes in a liquid form. It kind of looks like glue. You need some white craft sand. This will end up looking like the sugar on the outside of your gumdrop. A paintbrush and a plate or something to put your sand in. I'm gonna make my first gumdrop orange. Roll it into a ball, put it on your table, and then shape it into a gumdrop shape, which is kind of like a bell. We're gonna take our liquid Sculpey, which I just poured a little bit out on my plate, and cover our gumdrop with it. And roll our gumdrop in the sand. Doesn't it look exactly like a gumdrop you could eat? But we're not going to, right? Right? <laughs> I wonder what other candies you could come up with to make yourself. If you come up with some awesome candies, I definitely want to see them. So ask a grown-up if it's okay, if they would post a picture of the candy that you made and tag me, Kylie makes it. I would love to see what you're making with your polymer clay and get some ideas from you too. I'm gonna sculpt a little bit more and then put all of my fake candy onto a cookie sheet and bake it in my oven. Different polymer clay bakes for different times and different temperatures, so follow the instruction on the polymer clay that you're using for how long your clay needs to bake. When all the pieces are done, I'm gonna bring them back here to the studio and we're gonna decorate our gingerbread house, which will be the final step. I can't wait to see what we make together. I gotta get sculpting. Our pretend candy is all ready to go. I love how it looks. What candy looks the most real, do you think? Hmm. I still think the gumdrops look really real, but probably my favorite thing that we made are these lollipops. Now it's time to decorate our gingerbread house. I have another tube of sealant to add a little bit of icing if I want to, even though there's so much icing on this house already. And I'm going to attach all my candy with hot glue. Are you ready? This is the part I've been so excited for. Love it. I think it looks so amazing. What's your favorite part? <sighs> I'm gonna make it snow a little bit as a final touch. <sighs> Welcome back. 
I got some kosher salt. Okay, my painting's still wet. Remember what we called the wax that we put on with the crayon? We called it a resist. Resist! It's kind of saying like, no paint, you may not come. We do not want you here. But salt is gonna do basically the opposite thing. It's gonna go, I want to drink you up. It's gonna suck all the paint up into itself, which is gonna leave us with some cool designs. You just need a few pinches. The paint still needs to be wet when you do this, but you don't want to put it in like a lake. You can already see how it's soaking up the water, which is moving the pigment of the paint right to the salt. So when everything dries, we'll be left with these cool paint pigment spots, which are going to look really cool. Dry, 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 dry! <laughs> Today, for this quick craft, I'm gonna show you a fun project that you can do with any of your leftover wrapping paper. Or, if you don't have wrapping paper, any kind of paper will work. Printer paper, construction paper, scrapbook paper, you name it. Today, for this quick craft, we're gonna make paper beads. I'm gonna use this wrapping paper that Dax picked out at the store. It's Santa sharks eating donuts and gingerbread cookies and bringing presents and holding candy canes. Here's some examples of the paper beads that we're gonna be making together today. And then I think we should make a necklace or a bracelet. Let's do it. This is super easy and super fun. My grandma used to do this with me when I was a little girl. You can either cut it with scissors or if you have a grown up, they can help you and you can use an X-Acto knife. I'm gonna use my ruler. Be very careful, because it's very sharp. And I'm gonna cut a long triangle out of the paper, just like that. If you don't have an X-Acto or a parent with you, use a scissors. That definitely works too. A long triangle. doesn't need to be perfect. Awesome. Now you're gonna flip your triangles over so the colorful side is on the back. I'm gonna use these straws for this project. If you wanna make beads that have a smaller middle, use like a stir stick for coffee. Or if you don't have a straw, that's totally okay. You can make them around a pencil and then slide them off. The straw just helps make it a little bit stronger and sometimes a little bit easier to string if you have little fingers. Okay, I'm gonna start with a little piece of tape. I'm gonna tape the very edge to my straw, just like that. Now that I have that attached, I'm gonna take some glue. And you don't need a ton, but you're just going to make small little dots of glue all along your triangle. All the way to the end. And then roll it up. You want to keep it in the center as much as you can so that the bead gets wider in the middle. You can experiment with different shapes of paper, different lengths of paper, different widths of paper to get different shapes of beads. Smooth the last part over and ta-da! Let's do this one. Two beads. Now you might be saying, Kylie, that doesn't look like a bead. Don't worry, we're almost there. I like to add a little bit of glue to the outside of my beads too, just to make sure they hold together. So I put a little bit of glue and then I just smear it with my finger, just coating the whole outside. You can use Mod Podge for this part too. If you want, you can use a glossy Mod Podge and then that'll make your beads nice and shiny. Another way to do that is to use a varnish. This is a glass varnish. 
So put on your glue, let that dry. If you wanna add some shiny varnish or Mod Podge, let that dry. I just keep it on the straw for that part and put it in a piece of styrofoam like that. Just holds them right up while they dry. Then once they're all dry, you're just going to take your scissors or have an adult help you and trim the straw. I made these with different sizes and shapes of paper so that they all look a little different. It is so fun to experiment with this. Let's put this together into a bracelet. I'm gonna use this kind of string. You can use any kind of string you have. I'm gonna start by tying one bead onto the end to hold everything in place. Then I don't need to worry about it falling off that one on and now I'm going to thread the string through all of my beads. Put it right through the hole and pull. Let's keep going. I was going to make a bracelet but now that they're all on it looks like more the length of a necklace. love hanging out with you. This salt isn't dry yet, but I thought of another salt painting we could do while we wait some more. This one doesn't use kosher salt, this one uses table salt, which is a little bit thinner. Glue, watercolor paper, and watercolors again. For this one, we're going to draw our design on with the glue. I'm thinking I'm going to do a string of Christmas lights. So first I'm gonna draw the cord. Squiggly, squiggly. Then I'm going to draw on the bulbs. Once you have your design drawn in the glue, you're going to cover the whole thing with salt. Kind of like you would with glitter. Just a very uh, salty glitter. All right. Now we're just gonna kinda shake it, make sure it covers all the glue. This time we don't even want to wait for anything to be dry. We're gonna start painting now. The cords of my Christmas lights are green. Isn't that satisfying? Because the salt sucks up the water, the paint and the water spread in the coolest way on the salt. is very fun and you could make so many different amazing designs with that. I'm excited for the possibilities here. Oh, we gotta check out the salt. Ta-da! We're going to draw this Christmas tree today with just some basic shapes. That's right. If you can draw a triangle, you can draw this Christmas tree. We're going to start with a smallish triangle. There it is, three sides. One, two, three, and three points. One, two, three, perfect. Now we're going to draw a medium-sized triangle. For this one though, we're just going to pretend to draw the top point. We're not actually going to push our marker down on the paper. I'll show you what I mean. Here's the bottom point. Then I'm gonna draw up, pretend to draw this part, and then draw back down. Do you see what I mean? I didn't draw the top corner. This helps the shape look like they're overlapping. Like this shape looks like it's on top of this shape. Let's do it again, this time with a big triangle. Pfft. 
Now I'm going to use triangles to make the star at the top of my tree. I'm gonna use the tiniest triangle yet, just like this. Now I'm gonna draw another triangle, just a small, but I'm gonna put it the other way. A star. Now that we have the main outline of our tree done, we're going to do something called Zen doodling. Isn't that funny? I love to doodle. Sometimes it helps me listen, sometimes it helps me calm down, and it always helps me when I wanna draw, but I don't really know what I wanna draw. Plus, it looks really cool. I'm gonna draw some lines just like this. It looks awesome already. You can draw your lines however you want. Now I'm gonna fill up each section that I made with the lines with a different kind of line design or pattern. That's it. The sky is the limit on this one. You can imagine whatever kind of pattern, line, texture, whatever you want. What should we do next? Maybe some circles. Now I'm gonna draw some horizontal lines that are dashes. That's it. We just get to fill up all the sections of our tree with different designs. If you want to keep going with me, you can. Otherwise, just use your imagination and see how many different things you can come up with to fill the sections of your tree. If you have a grown up who says it's okay, I want to see your tree. Tag me on Facebook or Instagram. It's just Kylie Makes It, or you can use the hashtag Kylie Makes It. I would love to see your art. I hope you have a great day. Happy doodling.